Recently, GT7 had an update, and it was quite a big one. The physics have changed quite dramatically, and some cars became undrivable, while the other cars, like for example Supra, started to be a little bit OP in the straight line, and not only in the straight line. And all of the data can be found on GT7 engine, which is a pretty accurate and good database. And I noticed the Skyline actually lost 41.77 power points in just one update. So from being one of the fastest cars in the straight line in GT7, if not the fastest car, it became a lot slower and they also added a lot of weight onto that car and also 90% of the other cars also had an increase in weight and at the same time a reduction in power so it's quite clear that all of actually most of the cars got a reduction in power points which made the BOP a lot different and it changed the whole driving experience in online a lot different so I'm talking about BOP if you were let's say to tune up the cars or make you know just do something different with them you will not really see the difference but you can really see that the, some cars had quite a huge hit but at the same time BOP hasn't changed to the point where you like using a variety of cars it's once again only a couple of cars that you can use while the other cars at the same time while I was in this top split lobby I noticed that there was a lot of cars that had absolutely no pace. So the BMW was kind of okay, but going from the 650S, which had absolutely no pace and no straight line speed in this race. Okay, it was kind of good on tires, but besides that, nothing. Mazda RX Vision and this Ferrari are not even close up to pace, and I don't even want to talk about this R8 right here. So what really changed? I mean, as PD being PD, some things never change. You can still jump over the curbs like it's nothing. You can still do something like this, for example, upshifting. It's actually a double upshift into fifth gear just to make yourself a little bit faster. So why would you like to change that thing if you can change the BOP and really make the whole physics model a lot different? And I even installed this kind of telemetry data onto my phone and I wanted to track the difference in temperatures when you let's say lose control of the car and if the temps go up really really high but they seem to go down quite quickly but then I waited for about two and a half three minutes until the tires really cool off and they were going down very very slowly so in general when you heat up the tires of course you're gonna have a huge reduction in the first 10 to 15 seconds but I was waiting for about two minutes until the tires got up to 62 degrees Celsius I have to mention these are Celsius and only after two laps the rear tires got up to some temp but the fronts were still cold I couldn't get any temp into the front tires and that's what I thought, okay, don't be too slow on your outlap and eventually your second time in the qualifying will always be your fastest one. Of course, if you can save the tires and of course, if you can kind of manage the pace and if you of course can do a good lap. So this is the second point that I got into, but also a lot has changed when it comes to braking and braking a straight line and of course trail braking. So I used some footage from the dailies and of course daily online time trials and I can see that even the fastest guys in the world are now using less trail braking. I don't know if it's just me but this is not how it used to be. You can just get onto the brakes, lift off and then focus on the exit. Really focus on putting the power down quicker than it was before the update. And I also realized that Mekti in some turns is of course doing a couple of things differently than it was before the update. So the cars got a little bit heavier so the full focus is on the exit. So actually trail braking before the turn and then you're just releasing the brakes and accelerating even before the actual apex. But before the update it was braking until the apex and then going onto the power. Of course, I don't have to say, it's not the same car, it's not the same conditions, I mean, it's it's difficult, it's really, really difficult to kind of compare the two data. And the other point is that I really tried to get the best qualifying lap. My first one was in kind of sunny weather. I restarted it, my second one is wet and cloudy. I don't think you can really put a decent lap on slicks in wet conditions. I don't think it works like that. So I tried repeating the process over and over if I can probably get better conditions. And so I got back and in again. And once again, it's raining, it's 
it's kind of dry but still it's cloudy this time my fourth lap or it actually started raining it was wet and cloudy with a little bit of sunshine in the background but it really didn't impact the racetrack that much so even though I was in the same tri time trial, focusing on the same points, I really wanted to get the position up there. I really wanted to stay up there high. But when the conditions are changing so dramatically, it's hard to say if it's easy to find like the perfect conditions on the track. And even after only a couple of tries, I think I only, I only did my qualifying for about 20 to 30 minutes, and I was kind of into 227.4, which at the end of the week was still in the top 10. I finished in P9 in the world with the lap time that I set on Monday. So I don't think a lot of people know about this and I don't think it was, yeah, it was that obvious, but it is what it is. Check your weather guys. And also with the settings, okay, actually I'm talking about the force feedback. I mean, I'm now using more force feedback with let's say slower cars like Rip 4 and I'm using actually less with some other faster cars for example group 2. All of that is in the description as well as these settings on the screen. So I didn't really change that much in my settings on my Fanatec wheel. I mean I changed maybe a couple of things but just as I said before everything is down in the description and you can really copy all of that and I even made an explanation on how am I using all of the force feedback in game. So I'm using sensitivity at 10. I know some people will say use it at 1. This is the recommended setting but I do like it at 10. I don't know it gives me more control of the car and I do get that. I know it's a rough feeling and I really like that roughness when I'm turning in and I have all of the information that I need. But guys I really hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did you can always smash the like button. I want to make this short. So once again thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.